Headline from the Wall Street Journal. Temperature isn't a good litmus test for coronavirus, doctors say. Really? Really? Now, now they're just admitting this? Some reopened schools are taking children's temperatures each day, but experts and medical groups increasingly say a fever isn't a good gauge of COVID-19. This is not one of those stories that you're going to see blown up by the mainstream media. It's almost like, well, you know, we're the Wall Street Journal. We have to make a note of it. But this is the establishment admitting that they were wrong. Same reason you're not going to hear stories about how they figured out that ventilators were a bad idea in most cases because they were making plots or something that were making people more likely to die. And it was like, hey, if you get on, death, on, a, on a ventilator, that's a death sentence. It's like, well, gee, I wonder why. Let's just keep putting people on and letting them die. And then we'll figure out why later because we can use these ventilators as a way to scare people into, well, we got to flatten the curve because we don't have enough ventilators. Do you, do you remember this? Like in March, this was the panic that drove us into the state that we're in today. It's based on lies. Even if you believe the fundamental narrative of the virus, it should be obvious that if they mandated Americans go exercise and eat right, we would be healthier in every way possible, including viral transmission, than what they asked us or ordered us to do with shutdowns staying at home and wearing masks, which have made it worse. And, and, and this is just, I, I don't know when they're going to admit it about the mask. But the science is out there. And, and as has been pointed out numbers of, of times on this show by, by different guests, when you look at the countries that didn't have the strong mask mandates, it's not like, oh, yeah, well, then they had outbreaks of Corona that were way worse. And there's so many ways that people are going to be able to look at this and you know, say whatever they want. Like, like with Trump, was he when he's gone? Was he the best president ever or the worst president ever? You will have people in good faith arguing both of those positions. Just like with this, you're going to have people saying, "Well, you know, in those uh, you know Icelandic Nordic countries, they didn't have masks, but that's uh, they didn't have the virus because they're they're just genetically uh, not predisposed by their ethnic homogeneity." That like, no nah, bullshit. Look at the science, and the science has been clear since before this happened. The point is, when, or the question is, when is it? When are we going to admit that we've been doing these counter scientific things for so long? And the big one is prolonged masks and viral transmission. And here's the video that's going to get us censored from YouTube again. I'll, I'll uh, citing the real science that contradicts the mainstream narrative. We're talking about false positives. It's okay for the mainstream media to talk about false positives, but when Adam versus the man mentions that there was a lab in Massachusetts that got busted by the state health department for having about 400 false positive tests, and that there are tests that have been put out there that are known to have a false positive rate as high as one third, you go, well, gee, that challenges the mainstream narrative, doesn't it? Well, in this case, you know, we've had the science for a long time that has shown prolonged use of masks in controlled environments actually increases viral transmission. And that's the question you need to be asking science, not if I sneeze in front of you and there's a barrier in front of me, are you going to get less goobers on you? Yeah, that's kind of a no shit question. So across the country, the litmus test for many children's entry into school, athletics and extracurricular activities is their temperature. But experts and medical groups increasingly say that isn't a good gauge of COVID-19 as many infected children and adults don't get fevers. Furthermore, variability in individual temperatures, as well as questions about the accuracy of body temperature scanners and infrared contact-free thermometers, put such checks at risk of potential error. And if you recall, I told this story from a few weeks ago, we had a friend who had a probation hearing. She was in custody. She got busted for a probation violation. She was in jail in Yavapai County for victimless crimes. All talked about on victimless crimes. And it really is shameful. But I, I went to go support her. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I did. I think it made a big difference uh, going and talking to the judge in person and showing. I mean, because 
when a judge decides, am I going to release someone from jail? If, is this could this person be a serial killer who's going to make me look bad for letting them out? If not, I can I can let them out. And so show, in, in cases like this, you know, if you have a friend who's going to jail, show up, brave the Corona bullshit, show up and show the judge this isn't some random crazy weirdo who might just go you know, who might have you know body parts in a freezer somewhere. You know, no, this is a normal human being with friends and connections to the community. And when I went into the courthouse, thermal scan on the forehead, mask mandate. And it's just, imagine if I had a fever from like a false positive fever, you know, from I was late, I was running up to the building and, and my forehead, you know, I just blood rushing to it shows it shows it's a little warmer or, you know, that I had some other disease. Maybe I, maybe I had just a regular flu and nobody cares about the flu. I do. I say, hey, if you have the flu, stay home. But, you know, I'm glad that I was able to get through and go to court and help this person. And they're not in jail right now, partly due to those efforts. In some cases, parents are taking their children's temperatures so often that doctors say they are diagnosing more cases of periodic fever syndrome than usual. Periodic fever syndromes are auto-inflammatory disorders in which children have recurrent episodes of fever and other symptoms though the genetic conditions are considered rare, doctors say they often go undiagnosed. Well, it could, uh, you think stress might be uh, leading children to show signs of a fever? Do you think maybe they're developing this because of all of the insanity that we're putting them through right now? And children need love. Children need affection. Children need to feel welcome in their families and in their communities, in their schools. And now they're being taught to be afraid of each other, that you're, you're a potential carrier. You're a danger. By virtue of who you are, you're a danger. The conditioning effect that this is having on the young generations right now is, I mean, you're going to see, you know, waves that when, when, when these kids become of age to commit suicide, you're going to see increased suicide. You're going to see anxiety disorders. You're going to see autoimmune disorders. You're going to see all sorts of other mental health and physical health long-term effects because of this, because of the stress that we're putting our children through right now that is totally unwarranted. And it is absolutely shameful. Uh, in other cases, doctors have been stumped by parents who say they're otherwise healthy children have had low-grade temperatures for months, unclear if it is connected to an undiagnosed asymptomatic COVID-19 case or not. Some, sometimes people just run hot, right? The U.S. Centers of Disease Control and Prevention study of nearly 300 children with COVID-19 found that 56% had a fever. So what? You're catching... You're, you're letting 44% through. This is a worse rate of catching what you're not supposed to let go through than the TSA. Its current guidance for school reopenings recommends against symptom screening for COVID-19. The American Academy of Pediatrics interim guidance on school reopenings similarly doesn't recommend universal temperature checks. As Nathaniel Beer is a pediatrician at Children's National Hospital in Washington who co-chaired the committee that drafted the guidance said, thinking that you have done enough by simply screening a child for a temperature is one of those things that we felt created potentially a false sense of security for our schools. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's right here. Doctors say that uh, temperatures vary throughout the day and with people's circadian rhythms. So there are all sorts of problems with this, but you're not going to see the... admission that this is that this is wrong um i mean this is, this is just the start of it you know and i, I I'm, I'm i'm a little optimistic with this like and, and i mean it's got this picture of, of a teacher with a student pointing this thing at her forehead his forehead it's like there's a whole other kind of we're you we're gonna you be we're gonna condition our kids to be accustomed to authority figures pointing guns at their foreheads. It's a temperature gun, but it's a gun. It's a it's a handheld device that shoots something forward at your forehead. And when I I mean when I had a cop do it at the at the courthouse, yeah, a part of me was like 
this is symbolically really uncomfortable for me right now. There's a cop pointing a gun at my forehead to make sure that I'm healthy enough to go into a court where I, where I have a right to be, that you have to go through this. And so it, it's kind of like, you know, a peeling back of delusions. I hope it starts with this. I hope people can uh, admit, okay, yeah, the, the temperature check thing, no, that, and then, then, and then maybe they'll look at the science and the masks. And the thing is, and I've said this about becoming a libertarian from being a statist, the more you have invested in your old worldview, the harder it is to embrace a new one, right? To the saying from Mark Twain, it is harder to, to convince someone that they have been fooled than it is to fool them. And if you've been fooled into thinking that the earth is flat in the center of the universe and you've got all of these fancy justifications to explain the movements of stars and planets around the earth that don't make sense. And then someone comes in and says, no, sorry, the earth is round, at least roundish, and it's not the center of the universe. And here's Euclidean geometry and, you know, things follow natural orbit patterns. Uh, of, of elliptical uh, shapes. Uh, if you've got so much invested in that old model, you got to do the new math over and over and over again, even though it's that much simpler. And like, if I tell someone who's, uh, you know, crazy about masks, hey, look, masks don't work. Here's the science. Here's the study of masks in the wrong question. They have to go back. They've built a worldview and a conclusion based on all this faulty science. And they have to take the correct science and go back. And when I say, look, You've been asking the wrong questions. Here's the right question. And when you ask the right question, the science is clear. Prolonged use of masks is counterproductive to slowing viral transmission. It's simple as that. And you go, well, what about this? Oh, okay, yeah, it's true about what, uh, yeah, Adam's right about this. Oh, yeah, and his data. Oh, yeah, it does displace this other study. And oh, yeah, there's this, uh, oh, yeah, okay. And you have to go through and it's like, you know, when you become a libertarian, if you've made all these excuses for the state, you have to go, well, OK, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense about the police. Yeah, that makes sense about health care. And the more you have invested in that old model, the harder it is to push out with the old with the new model, even if the new model is simpler. In fact, the simpler the new model is, in some ways, the harder it is to displace the old model because you have a big complex old model and big complex new models as well which one feels better you know and maybe the new one can push the old one out and, and, and i think that's kind of how people go from one organized religion to another or from conservative to liberal and back or whatever it is that they go through that way ideologically but when it comes to pushing out the, the mythology of the state there's well politicians love us it's just a few bad apples in the police that make the rest look bad and you know, bureaucrats are doing their best in a troubled system, and it's unfortunate that people take advantage of it and the rich get richer and the poor get poorer, but we're doing our best with it, with, the, with what we have to, oh shit, the whole system is set up to make the rich get richer and the poor get poorer, and all we have to do is apply basic ethics to overthrow this thing. <sighs> Sounds simple, and the solution is simple, but applying it to every element of the problem to chase out the bad ideas is not easy. And maybe with the, the temperature checks, because they weren't as embedded in the Corona mentality and, and, and paradigm that it's going to be easy to, hey, guys, we can drop the pointing guns at our kids' foreheads. You know how that, you know, it's making everybody uncomfortable anyway. Well, guess what? It doesn't, doesn't really work. At some point, it gets to the next level. But there's another related story to this from AP News. As Europe faces second wave of virus, Tracing apps lack impact. And remember what a big deal this was when they were looking at, you know, around the world. They didn't want you to focus on uh, the, the, the Nordic countries or, or, or any of the European countries where they weren't or, or any of the, uh, you know, the third world countries where they didn't have, you know, serious lockdown policies uh, or they didn't have masks. And go, hey, look, not wearing masks did and make things worse. Maybe we don't have to wear masks. No, what they did is they looked at the examples of countries that were doing well that had the strictest lockdowns and credited the lockdowns with no basis in science. And so where did we hear about contact tracing in the first place? Well, it was South Korea. 
voted best Korea by South Korea magazine 10 years in a row. Uh, by the way, North Korea was also voted best Korea by North Korean magazine 10 years in a row. But no, in South Korea, they had extensive lockdowns, shutdowns, and what was hailed at the time as you know, the cutting edge tracing apps. So to the story, mobile apps tracing new COVID-19 cases were touted as a key part of Europe's plan to beat the coronavirus outbreak. Seven months into the pandemic, virus cases are surging again, and the apps have not been widely adopted due to privacy concerns, technical problems, and lack of interest from the public. Britain, Portugal, and Finland this month became the latest to unveil smartphone apps that alert people if they've been near someone who turned out to be infected so they can seek treatment or isolate a key step in breaking the chain of contagion. But a few countries have scrapped their tracing apps and others that have rolled them out have found so few users that the technology is not very effective. The adoption rate goes from about a third of the population in Finland and Ireland to 22% in Germany and a meager 4% in France. Health officials initially targeted a 60% adoption rate, an optimistic goal based on an Oxford University study from April, although researchers noted a lower uptake still helps if other measures such as social distancing are enforced. Now, 22% in Germany, if that would, if that, that that's not insignificant. I mean, you look at, okay, it, 4% in France, tracing apps not having an impact at all. But hey, you got 22% of the population, if they were effective, you'd get up to 60 right pretty soon. And even with just 22% using them actively, you would see some significant drop in the virus that you could attribute to this and say that they're working. But no, they're not. And they're not for a couple of reasons. One, because there, there wasn't really a uh, you know, sound science behind them in, in a lot of ways. And any gap in the scientific understanding of a policy can render the entire thing useless or even counterproductive. And it is extremely counterproductive when you look at this effort of the tracing app as a whole, when you go how much time, money, energy, resources, attention have been put into these countries where the tracing apps were really being pushed and then didn't do anything. And you go, well, Adam, that's, that's just wasteful. Yeah, but it's actually counterproductive when, you're, when, when people have been alarmed, whether you think that's appropriate or not, uh, to a threat. And you misguide their efforts to something ineffective when those efforts could have been guided to something effective. And if you want to tell me that people are dying because we're not dealing with the coronaphobia or coronavirus itself effectively, well, then people are dying because people are putting out these unscientific efforts like contact tracing, like the forehead thermal scans. And dare I say, as we're about to perhaps finally come into some mainstream acceptance of this might be the next layer that is peeled back of this rotten onion that yes wearing masks also is a counterproductive policy based on faulty science i pray if i if i do anything uh called prayer it it, it is in my my thoughts to to, to this issue and that people will have the open-mindedness and the intellectual courage to admit how they were wrong. And, and this is something I'd like to say that I, I hope people can learn from my example, having been in the Marines six years, volunteered for combat duty and come back and said, you know what, this whole concept of militarism, this whole policy, this is wrong. This needs to stop. And I, I, I it, it did take me a certain, I don't want to say courage, uh, but, but humility and in, in being able to admit how wrong I was and how people died as a result of me being wrong. And right now, to whatever extent the virus is a threat, people are dying because people are wrong about the science and the policy in addressing this. And the sooner they can admit to the science uh, and the, the reality of, of the policy, the, the less people will die unnecessarily.